Hello everyone, today we discuss uh, delivery of uh, twin pregnancy and we are discussing uh, twin pregnancy for a reason because higher order multiple uh, gestations are quite rare. They only account for 3% of uh, multiple gestations. So 97% of multiple uh, pregnancies are actually uh, twin pregnancies. So we might as well concentrate on the on the common thing. So we are discussing this uh, because uh, when a woman comes in into labor with a multiple uh, gestation or a twin pregnancy in this case, this is really the critical uh, moment in her care. We've taken care of her throughout the antenatal uh, period. Uh, she's calm and is ready to, to go home with her two babies. And it's important that we uh, do things correctly uh, so that we we don't uh, we don't fail this uh, woman that is uh, in front of us uh, so twin pregnancies actually account for 2 to 3% of um, all deliveries and that is quite quite common so it means that for every 100, 100 deliveries we do uh, three of those are going to be twins so having the competencies to uh, deliver uh, twins or multiple gestations uh, cannot be overemphasized. As usual, uh, we talk about terminology because terminology is important. Uh, monochorionic means only one placenta. Dichorionic means that there are two placentas um, in this uh, twin pregnancy. Uh, monozygotic means that this uh, fetus developed from one uh, zygote. And um, dizygotic means that it developed from two uh, separate um, zygotes. Uh, we need to know what the lambda sign is. It's um, a sign that is used um, when ultrasound is being done to determine uh, chorionicity. So is this um, uh, uh, twin pregnancy dichorionic or monochorionic? And this scan is usually in the first trimester. That's the best time to determine um, the chorionicity of a, a twin pregnancy uh, by ultrasound. We know that twin to twin transfusion um, syndrome normally occurs in a um, monochorionic uh, kind of uh, twin pregnancy where uh, the twins are sharing one placenta and therefore there's connections in the blood supply and one fetus tends to get more blood than the other one and one fetus grows uh, much much better than the other one so that's what uh, twin to twin uh, transfusion syndrome is uh, the importance of this slide is to just really show that uh, twin pregnancies are really high risk uh, pregnancies and they should be delivered by appropriate staff in the appropriate uh, uh, facility. So we need to make sure that uh, we have um, facilities to be able to deliver twins and we have appropriate people to deliver these twins because the complications are really uh, quite a number. Preterm labor, preterm births, uh, preeclampsias, anemia, congenital abnormalities, We've already talked about twin-to-twin -twin transfusion uh, syndrome. These deliveries can be difficult because of all those maneuvers that have to be done uh, to be able to deliver um, a twin. There are also a high risk of um, hemorrhage because of overdistension of the uterus that leads to atony and uh, eventually postpartum hemorrhage. So we need to make sure that these um, patients are delivered in the appropriate uh, facilities. Uh, so, even though there's no uh, firm evidence uh, to show that a planned uh, caesarean section or planned vaginal delivery is better for the mother and, and her babies, uh, I think that it's a very good uh, practice point to make sure that uh, during the antenatal period, the mother knows exactly what's going to happen um, during her delivery. So, uh, she knows what would lead to a caesarean section, she knows what would lead to a normal delivery. All this, um, I think, is an important practice point to have all this information uh, done and already talked about with the woman during the antenatal period. So there are several things that we look at to determine how uh, a woman is going to be delivered when they have a twin uh, pregnancy. So we look at chorionicity. Chorionicity means um, what is the kind of placentation that this woman has. Is it one placenta being shared by the two um, 
uh, feta cells and if it's one placenta the likelihood of uh, complications is higher if they are in one sac or one amnion the likelihood of uh, cord entanglement is much much higher as well so these babies are usually uh, delivered by cesarean section we also look at the size of um, the second twin if the size of the second twin is much much bigger significantly bigger than the uh, twin one it means that the first twin can come out and then the second twin uh, gets stuck we know that the interval between delivery of the first twin and the second one should be about uh, 30 minutes any more than that usually means uh, there's something wrong and we need to uh, to intervene so we need to to look at the sizes of the twins then uh, we would normally look at the presentation of um, uh, twin one and it looks like that's the most important thing we don't really um, pay too much attention on the presentation of twin two so when twin one is cephalic it means that uh, generally if everything else is okay we would try uh, a vaginal delivery if um, the second twin uh, is uh, you know an abnormal lie we would not uh, normally uh, care as long as um, twin one is in cephalic presentation as we've already said but when we have um, a mal presentation in twin one with these patients are usually taken for cesarean section so a trans transverse lie in twin one breach in twin one means that uh, these patients in our setting normally would go for uh, for cesarean section uh, there's one point of note again as um, uh, in our setup a practice point we do not normally do uh, twin deliveries in uh, previous in patients with who have a previous cesarean section the reason is that there's so many manipulation that we might need to do in a twin uh, delivery and therefore we do not want to do it in a patient with a previous cesarean section um, we do not normally augment uh, twin uh, pregnancies in our setup I know that many other facilities and many other uh, obstetricians would normally do that within, without any problems. But in our facilities, we do not uh, augment um, twin pregnancies. And we do not also induce uh, twin pregnancies as well. The main argument is that um, induction of labor, augmentation of labor in twin pregnancies is kind of um, a challenge because we are not able to monitor uh, the status of the uh, twins and we know that there's a high risk of fetal distress when we augment labor and when we um, induce labor because of the oxytocin being given so that's the usual argument that is i know it doesn't hold in other places but that's the reason that in our setup we do not augment or induce um, uh, twin pregnancies So how do we prepare for a twin uh, delivery? We should have two medical staff uh, prepared to deliver this patient uh, because we never know what might happen. One baby might need to be uh, resuscitated when the delivery is still taking place. So we need two medical personnel. We need to make sure that we have um, two of everything, two delivery packs, two cord clamps, two resuscitators. We need to make sure that we have um, IV lines that are working because we might uh, need to use this for our oxytocin infusions, uh, need to resuscitate the patient in case of any bleeding. Of course, the patient needs to be grouped and saved and we need to make sure that um, we have someone with the competencies uh, to deliver a twin uh, pregnancy. We need to make sure that uh, we have uh, easy access to cesarean section in case of complications of uh, uh, twin deliveries like cord prolapses, uh, retained second twin. We need to have um, a cesarean section facility nearby or available to make sure that in case of a complication, the patient is quickly attended to. And we need to have uh, a working neonatal unit because of the uh, different possible complications that uh, can happen in a twin pregnancy. Yeah, so it's important to realize that the kind of monitoring that you have in the latent phase and active phase of labor uh, in twin pregnancies is, is quite similar. So the patient needs to be kept mobilized. Um, I know uh, we are developing this habit of um, 
making labor in patients always lie down but mobilization is important labor is a mechanical process gravity helps uh, pull down the um, uh, the fetus during labor um, they need to uh, have um, a fluid diet uh, during labor so that they are not ketotic uh, that would impair the progress of labor uh, we maintain the same um, expected duration of the Latin phase which is usually 8 to 12 hours after regular contractions start um, in the active phase we would normally open a pathograph the same way we open a pathograph in a single ton uh, pregnancy um, the main uh, challenge in um, uh, twin pregnancies is of course monitoring the two uh, fetal hearts uh, we used to be told that um, you need two people listening to uh, the fetal heart of the different fetuses at the same time. Uh, their fetoscopes uh, need to be some distance apart, maybe 30 centimeters apart, and there should be a significant difference between the two uh, fetal hearts that are measured. But practically, um, uh, properly monitoring um, fetal hearts intermittently with a fetoscope during labor in a twin pregnancy can be quite a challenge both in the latent phase and in the active phase especially that we don't have any gadgets uh, electronic fetal monitoring for twins uh, in many in any of our facilities so like we already said um, we only allow um, vaginal delivery when uh, twin one uh, is cephalic but of course uh, once in a while when a patient comes in advanced labor and they have a, a breech presentation would still uh, deliver uh, twin one as uh, a breech assisted breech delivery then we go on to deliver uh, twin two but in this scenario we are talking about a situation where we have a um, twin one uh, cephalic so we deliver twin one as we always uh, would do in a, a single tone um, uh, pregnancy. So twin one comes out and then um, after twin one comes out, the next uh, step that we have to do is um, examine uh, the patient, check for the presentation of the uh, twin two, check for the lie, check that the fetal heart uh, is okay. Uh, and then after all these things are checked, we do a vaginal exam. On the vaginal exam, what we want to see is that the membranes are, are they ruptured or intact? If they are ruptured, is there a, a cord uh, prolapse? Then we want to uh, determine, of course, dilatation, station. We want to um, make sure that we verify uh, the findings that uh, we, we found abdominally to like confirm uh, those findings. So we've done a vaginal exam. So in this case, we describe a situation where we do a vaginal exam and we find that the presentation of the second twin is favorable. So it's either in breach or cephalic. So in, if, it's in a, if it's in a breach presentation, we just um, uh, deliver uh, the second twin uh, by assisted breach delivery. If it's uh, in a cephalic presentation, of course, we deliver it as we did um, the first uh, the first um, uh, uh, twin. So the only thing here to remember is that um, uh, sometimes uh, after delivery of the uh, twin one, the contractions usually uh, can uh, like uh, stop. So uh, once we find that the presentation is favorable, then we can do artificial rupture of membranes and then put oxytocin to kind of kickstart uh, the contractions. After the contractions are kick-started, then the labor would move uh, from uh, from that point. It's important to remember that we don't do an artificial rupture of membranes before we determine the presentation or the lie of the of the second twin, because this would uh, predispose the patient to cord prolapse, and this also would um, make maneuvers very difficult. Maneuvers like uh, internal podalic vision, external uh, vision would be very difficult once the lycra comes out because there's no fluid uh, for us to maneuver uh, to maneuver the fetus. So once we do uh, ARM, we put oxytocin, um, then um, we wait for delivery of the second twin. And um, and then we we deliver uh, the baby after that.
So after delivery of uh, twin two, um, at this point we give oxytocin, the usual 10 international units IM for active management of the third stage of labor. Then um, we deliver uh, the placenta using uh, controlled uh, cord traction. We might need to cut the um, cord a bit long in this case uh, to make sure that we have um, uh, enough uh, length for any procedures that may be needed in the neonatology uh, unit. Um, the other thing we need to do is uh, properly label uh, the the babies so that we know twin one and twin two. We know twin twos have more morbidity because after the delivery of the first twin, um, there might be a partial abruption, there might be some cord compression, and that increases the morbidity for twin two. So it's important to label uh, the fetuses as um, uh, twin one and um, uh, twin two. So after this has been done, we give oxytocin, we deliver the placenta by uh, controlled cord traction. Um, then the next thing we have to do is um, start an infusion of oxytocin. We know that there is a high risk of um, a postpartum hemorrhage in um, twin pregnancies because the uterus has been over distended for a long time and there is a high risk of atony which leads to a postpartum hemorrhage. So it's important that we give oxytocin as an infusion to help reduce the risk of um, postpartum hemorrhage. This goes on up to maybe two to three hours the infusion to reduce uh, postpartum hemorrhage risk. Then um, finally we need to help the mother uh, take care of the baby because it's really stressful to uh, take care of two babies. There's a high risk of postpartum uh, postpartum depression in um, mothers who've delivered twins. So it's important that um, the mother is supported, helped to breastfeed, uh, taught to breastfeed um, uh, these babies. Um, so those are the things that uh, we have to, to do after um, delivery of the, of the second twin. So return second twin is, is an emergency. Uh, though currently people are saying that there's no duration uh, that we um, prescribed to say this is a return second twin, uh, we always maintain uh, the 30 minutes mark. Once a twin hasn't been delivered in 30 minutes, we say it's a return second twin and the morbidity for that um, a fetus might increase. So the important thing about a return second twin uh, prevention of, is prevention of a return second twin. So the way to do that is to properly manage a twin um, twin delivery as we have uh, described. Um, then if we still end up with a, re a return second twin, the important thing is to assess why do we have a return second twin? Is it that the first baby came out and the second one um, has, uh, we have a, like a cephalopelvic disproportion, maybe there's an abnormality, the head is too big, um, is it because the uh, fetus is in transverse lie and there's no way of um, doing an internal uh, podalic version because maybe there's not enough lycra to do that maneuver or is it that um, the cord has prolapsed and we don't think that it's possible to do uh, forceps or vacuum delivery for, for various reasons. So the important thing is to make the assessment and see that are we able to achieve a delivery by any means in a shortest possible time. If that is not possible, we just take um, uh, the patient for caesarean section. So the important thing here is assessment, uh, the reason why the second twin has returned so that we don't end up um, delaying um, the delivery more. So that's how we manage a, a returned uh, second twin. So thank you so much for listening to this presentation on delivery of um, uh, twin uh, pregnancies, the basics. Uh, thank you and we will see you in the next uh, presentation.